Hi, Byron here from Byron Bennett Coaching and Mentoring. Today I want to talk about anxiety for just a little bit, but then I want to just kind of walk you through what I do with some clients uh, when they're feeling really anxious, okay? So there's so many ways to tackle anxiety and there's so much to learn about it and know about it. And this is not replacing therapy, it's not replacing medications if that's what your doctor's prescribing to you. It's, it's not a replacement for that. But a lot of times I do meet people in an anxious moment as a coach. And this is one of the ways that a lot of times we'll tackle it. So if you're watching this video right now, I'm going to assume you may be feeling anxiety or have or maybe feeling it right now. If so, let's just walk through this together, some things that we can do. Okay. So first, let's realize that anxiety, you're having a fear of the future somehow. I mean, today's the tomorrow you're worried about yesterday in this case when you have anxiety. In my, I've had a lot of anxiety in my deepest, hardest part. Uh, for instance, on a Sunday, perhaps I can't even go out of the house. I was so anxious for the next day I had at this job. And then this was a job that was really kind of sucking my life out of me. And this anxiety would lock me up and it was stealing me from what anxiety isn't. Anxiety is not the present. So remember, Let's, let's keep this right away in mind. If you're feeling anxious right now, you are not living in the present. You are living somewhere else in time. In that moment of time could turn out any, any, any number of a bunch of ways. But right now, if you're feeling anxiety, that means that your brain, which by the way, your brain is there to try to make you feel safe. It is trying to ramp you up for potentially worst case scenario. And a lot of times it's really just not true. But you may already know that and go, I still feel anxious. So let's walk through a few things and see if this can get you started on the road to learning more and understanding more and perhaps finding some relief. So a lot of times what I'll do with people right away is we'll say, okay, if you're willing, let's do just really a little bit of breath work. Now looking at me, you can tell I'm not a meditator. A good day of meditation for me is five minutes, but I do two to five minutes every morning. And I want to tell you this, it's so important. I learned that after 30 days of even just that little bit, my anxiety started to reduce. So the breathing exercises and how meditation works and how it really can work will make a huge difference. So let's walk through it. And what I'm going to ask of you here is you might be thinking, I can't meditate. My mind's too full of thoughts. We're not here to get rid of any thoughts or to curb the thoughts or a lot of times you, you'll learn meditation or you'll try to do it and you go, I can't quiet my mind. The meditation I'm talking about is we're just going to observe the thoughts uh, for what they are. They're thoughts, okay? We already know. We're already worried about something in the future. It's, it's not happening right now, so we're going to observe it just like we'd observe anything else. So we'll start out with, we're going to take five kind of control deep breaths. Now, you may want to just put your hands over your heart. Uh, you can rest them in, in the direction, but you want to be comfortable. And I usually recommend that you're sitting up straight. Your feet are on the, on the floor, so you feel it grounded to the floor. You know, the spine's straight. You know, maybe the head balancing. So the whole thing's kind of balancing on you there. And hands over the heart for me for when I'm feeling anxious. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to reset that parasympathetic nervous system just so that I can get my thoughts about me to do the next step. So I'm going to have you take a breath in for five seconds through your nose. And I'm going to have you hold it for three seconds and then let it out for five seconds out of your mouth. I'm going to demonstrate it once. what the breath will look like and if you like you can add a small mantra to it like I am peaceful a lot of people find that makes a big difference for them so you can have a mantra or or not but I'm gonna do five and you might feel yourself get lightheaded you might feel yourself kind of run through you know maybe you're gonna feel a little bit dizzy perhaps and it's okay because what we're doing is resetting this amped up part of our body. The body and the mind are connected. So let's get our body calmed down a little bit and then we're gonna get our mind, okay? So let's start out, we'll take those breaths in for five. Hold for three. 
out for five. Another one. In for five. Five. Stomach is out. You're taking a belly breath. Hold for three. Out for five. Let's take another one in for five. Hold for three. Out for five. Do one more on your own. Exhale for five, all the way out through your mouth. Make noise if you need to. I'm at peace. Now in the future, you can continue that for as long as you like. Uh, what we're doing is we're entering ourselves in the spot where you could enter meditation to observe the thoughts. And that is what we're going to do next. But I'm not going to keep you in a meditation here. But remember, now what I'm going to show you here, as we move into step two and step three, you can do this while in that spot. So after those deep breaths, you could let yourself return to a calm breath. Maybe you just got your eyes closed and you're, you know, sometimes I'll look up like I'm looking up into my forehead and, you know, start to just feel the body is relaxing. Now the brain doesn't mean it started relaxing. If it did, be thankful, find thanks, find gratitude everywhere you can here because you've already started to find the present moment. And the present moment is always perfect. No matter what situation you're in, even in some of the most dire spots you've ever been in, under attack from something, ah, it's going terrible. If I could have broke any particular second, that second was very manageable. So we're remembering we're going to bring ourselves to the present moment. And guess what? Work with this long enough, you start to learn every moment is the present moment. Does this mean I don't have anxiety? I still have it. It comes, but I can get out of it sooner. I can get back to the present moment sooner with these practices. So you got your breath. And during this time, now when you have that breath, what I want you to become is the observer of your thoughts. Because the thoughts are coming from, I call it the left brain. The thoughts are coming from the brain that's keeping you from getting attacked by the dinosaur, okay? Those thoughts, that side of your brain, that part of our brain right up here, that's trying to keep us safe. It's trying to let us succeed. It needs money. It, it's trying to find the next meal. It's doing a lot of things for us. So we're not going to hate this part of our left brain. We're just going to realize that it is on overdrive on keeping us safe. And sometimes when we're too safe, we can't experience anything. Maybe you've been to the carnival or a fair or Disney World or something like this. You're like, those, those rides are a little bit frightening in some ways. But guess what? Staying safe, you won't have any fun. Now, we're not going to do dangerous, stupid things. What I'm saying is experience of life can be experienced completely when you just understand that you're okay. And wherever you're at, you're going to be okay. And that's where we're at at the present moment. And we're becoming the observer of our thoughts. And so the step two is being the observer of our thoughts, meaning this left brain is trying to keep us safe. And it's yakking. And it's creating a story. Think about it. The story it's telling you right now. What's work going to look like tomorrow? What's this conversation going to look like with this person? Oh my gosh, is my marriage coming apart? Is, is, is this relationship coming apart? Is, is my health bad? Uh, all the, it's telling you stories thinking it's keeping you safe. Now, if it's keeping you safe, is it keeping you happy? My guess is if you're here because you have anxiety, the answer is no, it's not keeping you happy. And happiness lives in the present moment. That's the only place it hangs out, okay? Sometimes in memories, you can have some memories. But the future, sometimes you can have a dream, but where anxiety takes you in the future is generally not a happy moment. Uh, if you were to call that a happy moment, that wouldn't be anxiety. It might be nervousness for something fun. It might be you know, ramping up, getting used to something. But 
the anxiety, the crippling thing that's been getting you. It's not happy spots. We're going to the present. Let's look at those thoughts and see the story. And we're going to see those stories and realize that those stories are things. Like this pair of glasses. It's a thing. See? I can look at it. I can manipulate it and I can touch it. So I'm the observer, the other part of me, the, the conscious soul of me, the, the child of God in me, the person that exists after I die, that part of me, the part of me that came onto this existence to experience this wonderful earth, that part of me is going to examine and observe these thoughts like I'd observe a child playing in the playground, like I would observe fish in an aquarium. Like I would observe anything else. I'm going to observe it and be curious. Because when you're curious, it's really hard to be anxious, isn't it? If you're curious. I mean, if you're running from a tyron Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? You're probably not thinking, hmm, what what's on his mind? You're sh shitting yourself running, okay? So when we become the observer of our thoughts, and we get curious. So just in that spot now, if you need to come back to your breath, come back to it. And just look at those thoughts for what they are. Remember, those thoughts are like, like you're watching a movie screen. And these characters are all playing out on that screen. But is that real? Is that you? Or is that what's happening on the screen? Many people say, no, you are the screen. You are the existence that these stories are playing out on. And you have choices of where to be. So we observe them, and we look at them, and we love them. What do you mean love them? They're causing me problems. You love them like you'd love a, a, a noisy a noisy child. It'd be like, wow, I wish, you know, it'd be nice if you can get quieter, but I'm going to love you. And just like a noisy child, you, if you go and beat them, they're not, you know, you're just going to ruin them, right? You can't scream at them. It makes them worse, okay? What really happens sometimes is they just need love. They need to be seen. And once they're saw, a lot of times they'll quiet down. And the same here. Once we observe those thoughts and we see it, hey, I see that story about tomorrow. I see that. Oh, you're you can talk, talk to yourself. You you can be the observer and go, oh, I see you're worried. You're worried about tomorrow. That's a story you're playing. I see that. And if you're doing the breathing in between and seeing those thoughts. And seeing those stories, you're probably going to start to feel yourself come down a notch. Now, as you come down a notch, that brain's going to kick back in and go, oh my God, you're coming down a notch. That's not what I want. I want you to stay amped up. I want to send cortisol. I want to send adrenaline into your body so you can be amped up to run away from this dangerous thing. Well, remember the cortisol and the adrenaline, those are poisons unless you're actually out doing something physical with them. So... We just want to look at them, and each time that story comes up, just keep observing. Go, oh, I see that now. Oh, look, a thought. Oh, look, a thought. Thoughts are things. Sometimes when you're meditating, you can see those thoughts like, like perhaps you're sitting in a, in a bubble bath, and bubbles are coming up, and those thoughts and stories are there. And each as they go by, you can look at them and just let it go. Or you can grab it a minute and look at it and let it go. You can pop it. You can play with it. But remember, as the person that's observing it, the control is yours. They're not you. Those are stories. Those are not you. Be the observer. That's who you are. So many people live their whole lives. And if you've been around somebody like the last few minutes before they pass on, you might see that even this person that might have been wound up their whole life, suddenly like they get it. It's like, wow, this whole time I was here for the experience. It wasn't about how much money I made. It wasn't about how famous I got. It wasn't about how many people I could control. It wasn't about, it was all of a sudden, wow, I'm just here to experience it. How do I experience it? In the present moment. And, and in their last five minutes, they finally experienced the present moment. And thankfully, because then many times, all the time probably, they get to move on to be with their creator in peace. We get to do that now. So the anxiety about tomorrow, yeah, maybe it'll go good. Maybe it'll be bad. But you know what? It's got a better chance of going good if you're good. Because 
this universe is just a big mirror for you. If you think tomorrow's going to be bad, guess what? Because what you're going to bring is going to make it that way. So even from a practical standpoint, it makes no sense to be rehearsing these bad situations. So let's just go and observe them and watch them just like you'd watch any other show. If you're going to watch a scary movie, if you watch a scary movie and actually believe the whole thing is true, you may not sleep. But if it's entertainment, it's no problem. Look at them. It's a movie playing in your head. Okay? That's all we have to do. And then, as we've observed them, the, next, the third and final thing here for today I want to mention is we surrender to the feeling, okay? The feeling. So I want to clarify, surrender doesn't mean give up, like, like you know, we gave up the war, or we gave up the fight, or we gave up our life, all right? I mean surrender meaning allow yourself to be in it, and I, in the feeling, not the story of tomorrow or the relationship or whatever your story is, not to be in that story anymore. But to actually be the observer and surrender to the feeling going, oh, I'm feeling anxiety as I observe. Oh, look at those feelings. Look how it makes me feel. I feel fear. I feel sad. I feel alone. Whatever those feelings might be. And own it. Just go, this is how this feels. You can make that feeling so you understand that it's not a bad thing. Pain, for instance, if I were to walk up to you and pinch your arm as hard as I could, you would slap me. That'd be the reaction. But I can ask you to pinch your own arm like this, right? And just say, just surrender to your own pinch. And you can take it for a long time. You know why? Because you know you can release at any time. And this is about getting to know that these stories, you can release them at any time. And that these feelings that come with the stories... What happens is you have this anxiety and it says, holy crap, i got to get you ramped up for this. And it sends a feeling at you. And that feeling doesn't go away because it's reinforced by the story. And so we're, we see the story for what it is. It's a thing. And we see it and we observe it and we love it. We just realize, oh, look at you. You're a story. Does that mean you say it ain't real? It could turn out to be real. What if the story is true? It can be true. That's not where we're getting at. We're not here to argue with it at all. We're here to just look at it. Just like if you're watching your child play on a soccer field and you're hoping they do really good, but you're really just the observer. And you're just there to unconditionally love them. No matter what, if they suck or if they're really good, just love them the same. Be there. Just You're just here to be with that nervous piece of you that's trying to keep you safe. And understand that it's going to throw a feeling at you when it wants to see something like, oh, be afraid. Oh, what am I afraid of? As soon as you say that, what's the brain going to do? It's going to give you a story, right? If you just see the story, the feeling will go away. If you attach yourself to that story, like, oh my God, what do I got to do next? And you say, oh, I need a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, E, F, G, 26 plans. So I cover the whole alphabet. I want to make goddamn sure I'm covered for everything here. You're stuck in that spot, and that feeling will get amped and amped and amped. And the adrenaline, the cortisol. You do that enough years, you are sick. Heart attacks, strokes, fat, mental hospitals, all kinds of things that can happen. And all we gotta do is just look at it and go, look at the story. Hmm. What if that's all true? What if it, that's all true? Let's go there, I'll go there with you. If it's all true, and you've been on this earth long enough to find a YouTube video, you already know that whatever it is you're afraid of is based off of something you've already experienced. Because that's all this brain is. It's a historical document holder. It doesn't know new stuff. If, it's, if you think it's looking for something new, it's taking something it's already did and just trying to recreate it in a way that fits it. In that little box it has, so even when you look at those stories and it's going, this could happen, this could be true. Oh, my boyfriend and girlfriend's gonna break up with me. Well, how do you know what that feels like unless it's happened before? Oh, yeah, if that happened before, ah, oh, it really, really is bad. And you got through it. Oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah. 
What did you need to get through it? Love. Love for who? Love for yourself. And we look at that nervous side of our brain. It's like it's our own, it's our own child looking at us. And it's trying. And you're here as the observer, the person that's going to live forever. The eternal soul is looking at it and going, we're good. I see you. I see that story. It's interesting. It might even be true. But we know how to do it. We're okay right now. Right now, we're okay. And right now, we're okay. And right now, we're okay. Feel it. Observe the thought. Surrender. Ah, I feel this fear. Not the story, the feeling. The feeling, many times, won't last more than a few seconds to a few minutes. As soon as you just surrender to it example again this here this may hurt when I first start doing it but after I do it for a few seconds I'll still feel it but the pain kind of starts to fade right I mean same with these feelings they may feel sharp at first but what you have to do is just look at it and go you ever cut your finger ow this really hurts just look at it and go my finger's cut and you start looking for the band-aid. Pain, it's got pain, it's there. It's not as much, that's what we're doing here. Breathing, I really encourage the meditation if you can do it, but the meditation is just observing the thoughts. And remember, there's an observer of you, that's the part of you that's gonna live forever. And it's observing these thoughts that are created by the part of you that keeps you safe. And we don't want to get rid of that part. This part keeps you from walking out and getting run over by a bus, okay? We need it. We love it. It's there. It's doing its thing. But it's not the captain of your ship. The observer. You're here to experience life. You observe the thought. You feel the feeling. You surrender to it. And you let it fade. How often do you have to do this? As often as you need to. How often do I have to do it? In the beginning, so many times a day, it was almost unbelievable. Nowadays, here and there. Every day, depends upon what I'm going through. Depends upon what's triggering me. But I know the secret is to become present in the moment. And I want to share that with you today. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and like probably see I, I'm new at the video thing I've been coaching quite a while and I love helping people so subscribe and like if you like it and leave in the comments uh, anything else you would like me to uh, talk about hope you have a good day